know that it's something real Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Hey, hey Gonna say how I feel Cause I know that it's something real Gonna say how I feel Cause I know I swear that something in the air is so vibrant. Now I'm just pointing out the fact. Oh, I almost had it all together. I, oh, echo in here. I hope it doesn't echo with you guys. I am in another room. Uh, because Annalena and Philip are actually on their way home. They, hang on, I'm missing something. What did I leave? I had a light. Where'd that light go? Oh, well, we're going to do without it. You guys just have to do with my light being under my eyes there. I thought I had a light here. Oh well. Um, their plane just landed uh, and I just got back from swim team with Layla. Oh my gosh. She was amazing. Amazing. Just reminded me so much of sitting poolside with her mom for hours and hours and watching Watching the kids go back and forth, back and forth for swim team for, yeah, it was amazing. So um, anyway, I'm going to, let me just pull up. So it, um, in the description, in, in a chat, would you guys, um, let me know if the sound is doing okay, if it's tolerable, because it's about as bad, good as I can get for tonight. Tamara, hi, and Lupe, thanks for the heads up earlier on it going in and out. I think that was um, just the beginning starting. I didn't have everything quite set perfectly. And uh, Angie's here, hi, and there's Tamara, Angie, Tamara. Yep, uh, I started five minutes early, so people might be just joining in. Deidre, yeah, uh, you just made it house showings, yeah, see? Um, I have no idea. They went back to see to Phoenix today to look at some houses. So um, I have no idea. So that's why I kind of want to get done because when they drive in, I'm going to be all excited about what to hear what they've got. Anyway, and the kids will be just loud. <laughs> um, thank you. Okay. So you guys, today of all things, there's Janet. Hi, Jay Witty, Jet Art. Art Acrylic Creations by Jay Witty, Janet Witty. Yes, love it. And Deidre's sound is great. Thank you so much. And there's Larry. Good to have you here. Oh, Larry, I went over to that art store that's off of Market in downtown Tacoma. The one art collections and more. Oh my God. The ceiling is painted. The floor is painted. It's my, I, I took little videos inside. I, I'm going to throw some things in, but oh, yeah, oh, just to a little art therapy today, but today you guys. Okay. So here's the deal. Today is national upsie daisy day. Now you've all heard oopsie daisy, but did you hear upsie daisy? And I thought it was pretty awesome. So here is the thing on my national day calendar. Come on, undo and get it back in. Are you not taking it? Come on, you're supposed to get it back. There it is. 
National Upsy Daisy Day, um, is June 8th. Each day, year on June 8th, National Upsy Daisy Day is set aside to encourage you to face the day positively and get up gloriously, gratefully, and gleefully each morning. I thought that was pretty cool. It says every day is a gift, and if we remember that as we rise each morning, it will help us carry a good attitude through the day. Whatever the day may bring us, life is full of challenges and bumps in the road, and it is our attitude that helps us over the bumps and through the challenges to move onward with a smile. I get these things off of this national day calendar. It always has some fun things. There's all kinds of things today. Um, give it a try. Be grateful and thankful for what you do have, such as a bed to sleep in, food to eat, friends, and family. Try a smile and see how it feels. It may surprise you that it feels good on the inside also and how others, people will smile back. You may just brighten up their day. Upsy daisy. When I saw that last night, Layla was asking me about what day it was on the different things because she's waiting for it to be, you know, she wants it to be kids day. And because um, there were several other things that June 8th was, whoops, um, what else was it? It, it was, um, let me go back to this. Let's see, June 8th. Let me, we are in June 8th. June, no, we're June 7th. Oh, Jill, Jill, I'm in the wrong month. June, go back. June 8th. So today is World Pet Memorial Day. World Brain Tumor Day, World Oceans Day, which I knew is World Oceans Day. Everybody kind of knows um, does that. And National Upsy Daisy Day, National Name Your Poison Day. <laughs> Got my crabbies, you bet. And National Best Friends Day, which Layla thought that was pretty cool to do with that. So um, it was fun. So I wanted to figure out what I could do with this day on um, National Upsy Daisy Day and make it wonderful and fun. Celebrate, uh, you know, take another day on with a smile, greeting it gratefully, gleefully, and what was the other? Graciously? I don't know. Anyway, going for all those things and hoping that I could find a story. And I did. I found a really cool story. Um, it's called I Will Dance, and the author, where did she go? There she is, is, um, there, Nancy Flood. And Nancy is, um, here she is, throughout my life I've enjoyed writing, reading, and sharing stories. College, I wanted to learn about the brain how do we remember? Why do we forget? And why we want to try new things? Yeah, don't wish we had those answers. Just how does our brain work? So I, she became a research psychologist and studied brain development at the University of Minnesota and as a postdoctoral scientist at the University of London. Whoa, that might seem a long way from writing books for kids, but it's not. Her work is always focused on children and young adults as a researcher, counselor, teacher, parent, and now a writer. She conducts workshops on child abuse, learning disabilities, play therapy, and creative writing. My work and research has allowed me to live all over the world in Malawi, Africa, Hawaii, Japan, Western Pacific, and most recently the Navajo Nation where I hike, ride my bike, and attend local rodeos. Story is a powerful way to build compassion, don't we know it? And bridge understanding between cultures. Story has the power to heal as well as teach. She says, I've written several books, a lot of them, but she says, bottom line message, read anything and everything. You learn interesting stuff, meet interesting people, and go places you've never seen or been. Read every day. As a kid, I kept a stack of comic books under my bed and a flashlight. <laughs> now I keep a stack of books next to my bed. You never know when you need a good book. I love that. And here is the author, 
Juliana Swanee, I mean the illustrator, Juliana Swanee, she has a really cool background too. She says, I illustrate children's book for a living and couldn't feel luckier to have had such an amazing job. She's had one job since she graduated college and that's illustrating um, children's books. When I was little, I was homeschooled and was constantly drawing and making things. I think that experience taught me two valuable things for my work now, to be very self-motivated and to love being alone. I've been an illustrator full-time since I graduated college through my career has gone through several changes and looked pretty different at different times. Only started focusing on illustrating children's books in my 30s and I'm still learning and evolving. Originally from Michigan, went to college in Maine, lives with her partner in a 1911 Craftsman bungalow in Portland, Oregon. Yay, she's a neighbor down the hill. Um, I have lots of interest and I wish there were more hours in the day for all of them. Yeah, don't, don't we all wish that? Man, more hours in the day would be pretty awesome. So that was um, about the author and illustrator of this book. Hi, Janice. Is that Janice here? Thumbs up. Thanks, Janice is here. Yay. Good. And... When did national, <laughs> um, well, you know what, this national day calendar, I've had one of these, sorry, itchy back, um, for a long time. I get one every year and I used to use them in schools. And then there's a international one too, the world Cup that has, that's uh, done by, um, um, oh, what's the global organization there that has those. And so it's fun to, to find out. Some of them are pretty silly, but some of them are kind of fun to figure things out about. Anyway, um, so today the story that I have that she wrote is a book called, um, where we go? I Will Dance. And I thought with being Upsy Daisy Day, this was a perfect one about, you know, just that effort, that try, and it's based on a real place, and um, and I think you're really going to like it. So I'm just going to check through here, see how everybody's doing in chat before I hop into this story. Donna's here! Yay! Hi, Donna. Uh, that's okay, Donna. I started five minutes early. I changed the time because the kids plane landed and I'm anxious to find out if they found a house in Phoenix today, someplace. Who knows? Who knows? And I know they'll be here. It takes, they landed at like um, 640 my time and it'll take them a few minutes to get out of the airport, but they're both really adept at that. And then it'll, so they should be home by about 730, if not before. Knowing the way Amelina drives, Ooh, could be sooner, plus she wants to get to see her kids. So, and I was just over at, um, the traffic wasn't bad, because I was over at UPS, University of Puget Sound with Layla for her swim team practice. So, um, thanks to Angie for that, to let me know about that shipping. Cool. Um, and, all right. Looks like I've checked in. Deidre, everybody's gotten high. If I miss you, I apologize sincerely, but I think I got everybody. Sorry about the odd thing splitting my head. That kind of feels weird, but it's time for I Will Dance. Come on, come on. Oh, there it is. All right. There, yay. I Will Dance, written by Nancy Bo Flood and illustrated by Juliana Swanee. Okay, let me pull the it over kind of in front of me so that I can see the book and read for you guys. It was written in 2020. Very recent book. Um... I think this book is a recipient of the Ezra Jack Keats Award. I'm not sure, but I think it might be. Uh, 
on my birthday. Can't blow out candles, not enough steam or strength. But I have one wish, a pink tutu. I want to dance. I could barely breathe when I was born. I was supposed to live one minute, maybe two. Not 10 years of minutes. I want to dance, but I can hardly move. Only my head, only my arms and fingers. I wonder, how does it feel to have arms that reach up high, legs that walk, skip, run like other kids? I watch dancers swirl, leap, twirl, stand tall on toes. They pirouette across the stage. Their arms reach like elegant wings. Maybe I could roll my chair between, around, while the other dancers glide past me, tumble over me, until we all mix together. One beautiful laughing heap. Mom says... Imagine you are dancing. I don't want to imagine. I want to dance. The teacher says, oh, pretend you are dancing. I don't want to pretend. I want to dance. I want to feel the music sway, swing, fly, over, under, together, not alone. I won't give up my dream of dancing. How can I dance? Mom, how? We will find a way. Mom reads in the paper, Audition for Young Dance. All abilities, all ages, all are welcome. All? I'm not sure. I'm not ready. I am safe in my steel chair. Stationary wheels, a motor, me. What if they stare? Whisper. Not you, not you. Can't move, can't dance, not her. But I can't help wondering, how would I, would it feel? I read again. All abilities, all ages. Maybe, maybe, I want to try. The sign says dance studio, second floor. I roll into the elevator. Mom pushes the button. Roll out down the hall and then through an open door. I see the beautiful wooden floor, shiny smooth like still pond waiting, waiting for dancers, all dancers with canes and crutches, walkers in wheels. <laughs> Bare feet, slippers, or calluses, dancers. Not imagine, not pretend. Me? What am I doing here? Turn around, run away. Wait! Dancers' paws reach toward me. Welcome! Welcome? I roll forward onto the dance floor. Join us, we are many dancers, one circle. We pass the touch. The instructor steps toward me. Her eyes meet mine. Her hand opens. She reaches, dances closer until her fingers touch mine. She nods. Something inside me changes. I turn to the next person next to me. I lift my finger up, then down, swirl my fingers around. He watches, then reaches, echoes my movement, adds his own, passes the touch until the circle is complete. We are all one circle. Move to the wall, make two lines, one instructor says. 
Listen to the music. Feel the rhythm. Count the beats. One, two, three, my turn. Go. Slowly, then faster, each with a partner. We move across the floor. We mirror each other, move together, apart, create space, create shape, create dance as one, as us. We dance. We invent a new move. Doesn't work. Try again. Try harder again and again across the smooth floor. Swoosh. My partner swirls my chair. I power my wheels, circle with the others. We move in together, out together. Again, we practice, practice, practice. Performance night. A belly full of butterflies, a dressing room full of dancers. My turn. I roll up to the mirror, eyeshadow, lipstick, then blush. Now hurry, hurry, line up, hide in the wings, lights dim, a hush falls. Music begins, swells. I count the beats. Breathe. Heart races, hands sweat. Remember, remember the movements over and under and around one another. Swirl, glide across the stage, dance. Lights pour over us, pink and gold, circles of light, circles of dancers. Arms link over wheels, connect into one shape. Expand, contract, faster, under, over. I roar, spin my chair, circle round, soar. Lights out. Stop. Roll to the front. Spotlight on. Listen. Clapping, whistles, and cheers for me, for all of us together. Dancers, not imagine, not pretend, not alone. I dance. That's, I, dan I will dance. The author's note. What joy I saw and felt each time I watched a rehearsal or performance of the Young Dance Company. Giggles, smiles, laughter, hug. I watch dancers of all abilities move across the practice room or across the stage, some in wheelchairs, some with walkers, and some with independent mobility, but each dancer in harmony with the other each one a part of the whole. At performances, when I looked around at the audience, again, what I saw was not pity or sadness, but joy, tearful joy. I felt hope as I witnessed the children and adults sharing a passion, sharing friendship, sharing failures and successes. All of this is what Eva, the real girl who inspired this book, has taught me. Eva was born prematurely, hardly able to breathe or move, and was not expected to live. But like other, every other child, Eva was born with dreams. Let me try. With longings, let me belong. And with the desire to be and to become herself, Eva, a dancer. And it says about Young Dance, a note from Gretchen Pick, the executive director. 
Young Dance Transforming Lives Through Movement. Since 1987, Young Dance has encouraged young people to build body and spirit through the creative art of dance. Young Dance is an inclusive, artistic community of people of all abilities. All dancers are encouraged to push their own individual artistic boundaries. Dancers are invited to be part of a caring, creative community of artists. Dancers attend class on a weekly basis, and many are also members of the Young Dance Company. This unique performance company of dancers ages 7 to 18 integrates dancers with and without disabilities as equal participants in the exploration, creation, and performance of dance. They engage in artistic inquiries with professional choreographies and with other art organizations to push the boundaries of the art and practice of dance. For more information, you can visit youngdance.org. Oh my goodness, what a cool program and what a wonderful story about Eva. Ah, I love it when there's things like that about definitely an upsy daisy day kind of thing. <laughs> Encouragement, greeting it with a smile and a challenge. Yeah. Um, Yes, so about last night's stories with, I sent some pics and some printing plates from the 30s in my mirror room. <gasps> oh gosh. Yeah, I have got some gorgeous things coming in from people. And so it may take Friday and Saturday night. Um, we actually are going to head home late tonight because Annalena and Philip are getting home. And so we will be back at our place and things will be back in normal. And I'll actually get into my email and find some things. Um, so, oh, print plate. Yeah, Larry, I was down in your area of town today. You're the, down by the Pantages and the Rialto and all that kind of stuff where you worked on those. Oh, helping handicapped children embrace dance. Isn't that cool? Yes. Um, I think that that's just really a wonderful thing to do. Um, that's a special for them. It's, it's amazing what, what kids can do when um, they're given the chance to do all of those different kinds of things, kids with all abilities. Um, and my mom loved to dance. My dad didn't so much, so, uh, so she, but my mom could do the Charleston and all kinds of wonderful things. But so dad didn't enjoy dancing as much as mom. So there was a friend of theirs um, that mom had gone to grade school with. And when they went to, fan to fancy dances, my mom and Lee Seaman would uh, dance together. And yeah, it was always fun. Um, but mom and dad, my mom and dad met ice skating and they could ice dance together. And that was just Oh God, that was a sight to behold. It's still one of my favorite, all my favorite memories are wrapped up when I would see them ice dance together. Pretty amazing. Um, yay. Larry says, I, uh, I lost dad 38 years ago, but I can see him dancing right now. Yes. That's how I feel about seeing my parents ice skating, ice dancing. It's just, um, amazing kind of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gloria, since my husband didn't dance, I started Bella Dance. 15 years and almost eight years at a small Greek family restaurant. Wow. That's spectacular. What a beautiful art. Yes, it is a beautiful art form. I, belly dancing is amazing. Um, I'm glad you found this uplifting, Gloria. And it, it did feel like a really fabulous book. Um, and... Donna, yes, have the honor of working with all levels of disabled students. I mean, student, they, it's just fantastic to see the different abilities and what they can do and what, when given the chance. Um, and it is pretty spectacular. But you guys, I have a feeling that my daughter and son-in-law are going to be rolling in the driveway within a couple minutes. So I want to be downstairs to greet them. And, oh, and go rescue Bob. He introduced Lachlan to the original Muppet movie tonight. Yeah, pretty funny. Pretty funny 
to see Charles Durning. If you if you've ever seen the original Muppet movie, and then you know the movie Oh Brother uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou with George Clooney, Charles Durning kind of recreates his Muppet character that he did in the Muppets in to the Charles Durning in as his character in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. I, it's pretty funny to see. Um, yeah, Donna, exactly. Larry, not exaggerating when I say it feels like an honor to have those kids really do things that make you just eyes open. And, you know, it's an upsy daisy day. We greet it with a smile. If we can think about smiling, meeting, greeting ourselves every morning with some kind of a smile. Um, oh, my niece suffered severe head trauma. Hit by in her teens, she would dance on the beach at sunrise. Now she's bound to a wheelchair. I bet you she, Janet, would appreciate this book. You know, that's uh, hopefully. Anyway, everybody, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being here with me on this Upsy Daisy Day. Hope your day was Upsy Daisy. Hope each day is Upsy Daisy and you greet yourself with a smile. Look for that beauty hidden in plain sight. First place to go look is in the mirror. Just give it a big grin and it'll be upsy daisy all the way. And until next time, you guys, I feel honored that you brought me into your home and that you came with me on this journey. And I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. Dance time! <laughs>